All right, cool. All right, you see my screen? Yep. Okay, fantastic. I apologize that I keep uh, repeating myself. It's the problem is I don't know if you see what I see and more so are you seeing my face or you're actually seeing the presentation. So thanks again for uh, jumping on the uh, call. My name is Simon. I'm the team leader broker for uh, KW South Bay here in the city of Torrance. So um, <clears throat> today's uh, conversation is going to be about the end of the California eviction uh, moratorium. Now, again, there's a lot of changes when it comes to uh, the eviction uh, moratorium and more so uh, depending on the location. City of Los Angeles is a prime example, excuse me, a prime example that the uh, uh, moratorium is still full in effect. So I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. Ask uh, questions as we go, but the presentation that I'm going to uh, share with you is straight from the uh, California Association of Realtors Legal Department. So a lot of the information going forward is uh, right from uh, the state itself, okay? So what is the uh, end of the uh, California eviction uh, moratorium? Well, let's go into this. <clears throat> so how we got here first and foremost, right? Back in March of 2020, right? This was last year. Remember all of us were not anticipating uh, the aftermath of what we saw, which was the uh, COVID-19, right? You know, January, February was as normal. We were hearing rumors, right? That certain parts around the world were shutting down. While I be the first to admit, I did not know that California and the entire uh, state and then eventually entire world would go into a lockdown. It was just so crazy. This was something out of the, uh, out of a movie. So March, and I think it was around March 14, 15, or 16, state of California, the governor decided that um, we were shutting down. We were considered non-essential, right? And then ultimately where we're at now, a year and a half going on two years since this all transpired. So back in March, 2020, the executive order by the state of California ordered delaying all evictions right, all evictions, 60 days. So everything pretty much stopped. Everything was on a halt. Any, any preceding evictions were completely terminated or stopped because of the, um, uh, the shutdown, the non-essential and then the uh, uh, parameters that the whole entire state went into lockdown. Where we were ordered, right, remember, we were ordered to stay home uh, if you were not an essential, such as a police officer, a firefighter, or a doctor, you were considered essential. Banking institutes, again, were considered essential. But real estate for about two to three weeks, uh, folks, we were considered non-essential, and we were ordered to stay home. Then on April 2020, uh, the uh, Judicial uh, Council uh, froze on all evictions. So within a month after March of 2020, the executive order, right, was to delay, basically start to delay from ever uh, becoming an eviction. Then in April, the following month, the uh, courts froze all evictions, meaning we couldn't evict. Even if the, um, if the tenant was two months behind, three months behind, unfortunately, because of this order, we were frozen from allowing or even uh, pursuing the eviction process. The court systems also went down on shutdown. We didn't have judges. We didn't have uh, the personnel because everyone was ordered to stay home. Then on September 2020, the COVID-19 uh, Tenant Relief Act, CTRA, came into, uh, into place. Okay, and that was the AB form 3088 that came into full effect. This was again the order from the governor, from uh, Governor Newsom from the uh, state of California. Now, the uh, AB 3088 was in February of 2021, extended by the SB 91, meaning that what we could have at one point in February of this year. Uh, was extended. Basically, 
we thought that by February of this year, we were able to go through the motions of the eviction process. And then ultimately February came, it was within a day or two of that uh, day hitting, it was extended, okay? So we were not able to uh, start the eviction process because of that extension. Then in July of this year, they said, well, we're gonna give all tenants in, uh, in possessions who have either been impacted by COVID or who have uh, not made essential payments to the rental uh, was giving the relief to an extension again. And that extension was uh, conducted- Hey, Simon, uh, you're yes. cutting out. Am I cutting out? Okay. Let's see here. Cutting out in what way? Voice or in the presentation? Uh, voice. Okay. Um, uh, uh, let me uh, let me see what's going on here. Apologize for the uh, difficulties here. I'm not sure what's going on. All right. You know, technology can be a great resource, but it also can be a living nightmare, right? All right. Can you see? Uh... Okay, are we good now? Can you see my presentation? Jane, hello. Yes. Uh, yeah, I I can see it. Actually, your you your voice was cutting in and out, but it does it actually sounds stronger now. Okay, maybe if I come in a little closer, that'll help. Well, thank you, Jane. All right. So going back to the uh, to the presentation. So on July 2021, the extension again was um, was uh, uh, granted and extended for an additional time which was now AB 832. Then the uh, COVID-19 Housing Recovery Act, which is the uh, next phase of what transpired. The end of the expense in just costs, the CTRA expands the just cost termination requirements to include all residential properties in the state of California, including single family residents condos, units, and newly constructed properties. Under this just cause uh, rules are defined under the Tenant Protection Act, AB 1482, with only minor differences from the uh, CTRA. Remember the extension. And what is just cause? These are individuals who have uh, been impacted by COVID, right? If you were impacted by COVID or a family member, has been uh, uh, impacted by COVID. You lost your job, reduction of uh, hours at work. Uh, now from a full-time, you went into a part-time or now it became a more a seasonal, right? Where you were on one day, off uh, two days, on one day. All of that imp implements and was impacted by this just cause. So with that, the, uh, the landlords did uh, not have any... Uh, any uh, moral support by the state, but more so could not uh, start the eviction process because of uh, COVID-19. And all these rules and regulations such as the tenant protection was enacted by the state to protect uh, the tenants from landlords starting the initial process and ultimately evicting the uh, individual tenant or family in place. The end of the expansion just cause, right? Let me, uh, one second here. Okay, so the end of the expansion, if you remember back in uh, September of this year, uh, there was already talk by the, uh, the California Association of Realtors. We heard it on the news. Uh, Governor Newsom uh, started talking about that we are going to end this, uh, this uh, just cause eviction a moratorium. And that began, began on October 1st, the standard exemption to the just cause requirements 
ended up returning. Most notable single family residents and condominium units, well as uh, any units constructed in the past uh, 15 years. As a reminder, a reminder the exemption, right? Uh, for single family residents, condos, the tenants must receive the notice of exemption, which is the form that we're going to illustrate in a few, which is the RCJC incorporated into the standard lease form since January of 2020. So this is more geared to individuals that uh, do property management, as an example. This is not really real estate sales. Uh, but more so if you are working with a property manager and the uh, avenues of selling a property, the ins and outs and how to navigate that. And ultimately, if it's a uh, tenant in place, if the uh, buyer or the seller are selling and the uh, buyer is asking or requiring the uh, tenant to vacate the property at time of close of escrow, okay? So the return of the non-fault 60-day notice car form NTT just cause rules will still uh, apply. The property subject to the Tenant Protection Act uh, is two units more than 15 years old. Property subject to local just cause ordinance, property subject to any local temporary COVID just cause tenant protection, okay? Now we're gonna go into the actual form itself. Now the PRQ and the eviction proceeding, right? The CTR requires landlords uh, to provide a 15 notice, uh, 15 day notice to pay rent or quit with a blank declaration of COVID financial hardship. So what this means is that because of the uh, limitations on October 1st, this allows now the proceedings, right? And only if it's outside of the city of Los Angeles. If the property falls in the city of Los Angeles, it's under different rules and regulations. They still apply to this. This is more of the incorporate areas of LA County, San Bernardino, Riverside, Orange County, Ventura County, stuff of that nature. This uh, implement, uh, excuse me, impl implements the uh, notice to pay and co uh, COVID transition period for rent or quit. So. If the property is within the city of Los Angeles, in the city of Los Angeles, they have extended that time frame, I believe, till the end of January of 2022. What this form entails is any properties outside of the city, the Los Angeles city, uh, then this implements this uh, form. If the, uh, if the tenant signs and returns the declaration, no eviction can be filled. That's only if there is a COVID financial hardship. No eviction can be filed in the tenant until a, uh, September 30th to pay at least 25% of the COVID uh, rental debt. And then September 20th and September 2021. So in essence, if the, uh, if the tenant had signed this declaration that it was a financial hardship, then they must still pay a percentage of the rent. For example, if the property is $1,500, right? Let's just theoretically speaking, $1,500 times 25%, that means that the tenant would have to contribute $375 as an example. Now let's say it was a $2,500 uh, monthly rent. 25% of that would be $625 that the uh, tenant would have to contribute in order for the uh, landlord not to start the uh, proceedings of an eviction. If the tenant does not make that 25% uh, payment, landlord may proceed with the eviction as I, I stated, compliance with this new rule, okay? This uh, procedure applies for all rent that became due September uh, 2020 through September 2021. Meaning that if you had a tenant as an example or as an illust illustration, the, uh, the eviction uh, moratorium started last year in March, right? Where the state went into a shutdown. Then the following month is when we got the ordinance that you know everything was gonna freeze. Then by September of 2020, that's when the, um, uh, the state says, look, we need to give some relief to the landlords because they're also in financial hardships. 
they're not collecting collecting the uh, the rental incomes right to pay if they have mortgages. So this really impacted the small mom and pop investor who had bought a duplex triplex as a, as an example, and their mortgage payment right their mortgage payment was you know twenty five thirty eight hundred dollars and they relied on the rental income. Because of this uh, ordinance, it completely stopped. Now the state and also on the uh, local level, county and the city local uh, level, they um, started a, a relief fund for uh, distressed hardship tenants and also a uh, financial hardship for landlords who had not been collecting any rental income. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a moment as well. The procedure applies for all rent that became due September 20th in 2021 regarding, uh, regardless of the uh, notice been served. So the PRQ in the eviction proceeding, right? The COVID re uh, Rental Housing Recovery Act. The uh, new special three-day notice procedure for October 2021, March 2022 is called the recovery period. Landlords can demand full amount of rent due on a three day notice to pay or quit. But with that, there is exceptions. Landlord must first have applied. And here's the key word, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, landlord uh, uh, first had to apply for emergency rental assistance, which is the ERAP. In order for this to fall into place and to into, uh, have the qualifications, there is two things that must happen. One is the uh, landlord doing the necessary application, submitting that application for emergency and rental assistance. And then two, that the uh, landlord, excuse me, the uh, tenant has uh, not paid the rent and has been given the three day notice to uh, pay rent or quit. After the uh, landlord has uh, served a three day notice, the tenant has 15, uh, business days to complete the ERAP application, okay? The requirements to apply for assistance applies to all evictions filed between October 2021 through March of next year, 2022, no matter uh, when the rent became due. Here is the link that the uh, uh, tenant can go into, housingiskey.com. Now, if you look at the uh, tenant to pay COVID relief uh, period rent or quit, it has very specific information and it also has the 800 number where the uh, tenant can reach out for support. You see, you can start your application by calling the 800 number at 430 2122, or you can visit the housingiskey.com. The new three-day notice will be available when demanding rent that comes due uh, between October of 2021 and March of 2022. <clears throat> no more declaration, but tenant must get uh, required advisory. <clears throat> so under, the, uh, under this new proceeding, um, on the form itself, it says important notice from the state of California. You must take action to avoid the eviction, right? You got to be proactive because eventually you will uh, be served and then ultimately the proceedings of eviction. And then if you wait longer, then unfortunately uh, you will uh, get the uh, eviction to uh, vacate the uh, property. As part of the state uh, COVID-19 relief plan, money has been set aside to help renters who have fallen behind on rent or utility payments. If you cannot make the amount demand in this notice, you should uh, simply apply, right? So you should completely complete a rental assistance application as, as soon as possible. It is a free and simple application. Citizenship or immigration status does not matter. So it doesn't matter. If they are renting a uh, dwelling, uh, that is a single family, duplex, triplex, or fourplex, then you can uh, go through the motions of applying for some relief financial uh, position. 
Do not delay, it says, and if you do not complete your application for rental assistance within 15 uh, business days, your landlord may be able to sue to obtain a court order for your eviction. So on top of everything, the uh, proceedings of the evictions, uh, documentations, they can include that as part of the court order to demand money if the uh, tenant does not at least make an effort to apply for assistance. Then it follows up with, it says, you can start the application by calling the uh, 800 number or visiting the uh, website itself. Okay, so eviction lawsuits will only proceed if prior to filing. The landlord has attempted to obtain re uh, rental assistance to cover the unpaid rent. So it's a combination of both the tenant and also the landlord. As I said earlier, I stress the fact, if you are in a position, you meaning your clients, then the protocol and the procedure is for the uh, lander to also follow the uh, rules and regulations and apply for some type of uh, relief assistance because the tenant has stopped making payments. The landlord uh, and the rental assistant application has been uh, denied. So the landlord has attempted to obtain the rental assistance to cover the unpaid rent and the rental assistance application has been uh, denied or after 20 days pass, there is no sign that the tenant will cooperate, okay? So if you have any of these parameters or if the tenant uh, is uncooperative, then uh, the requirements that the judge to verify the prior to filing the eviction lawsuit, the landlord attempting to obtain the rental assistant and it was denied because tenant was not eligible, uh, the rental assistant program ran out of money or the tenant would not cooperate with the uh, landlord. So this is part of the uh, initial process. And this is why it's very important. After this uh, session, I highly recommend jump on this uh, website, get uh, familiar with the initial process of the housingiskey.com website. It has a lot of information regarding rental assistance, eviction uh, protections, and foreclosure assistance for homeowners, okay, the investors, the moms and pops, uh, resources for the renters, landlords, and homeowners, okay. COVID-19 uh, rental relief, <clears throat> the applications to uh, jurisdictions and the options, A or B, applying for rental assistance, again, going into this website, housingiskey.com. Depending on your city and county, folks, you can apply there, but it won't be necessary because the California website will direct you to the correct site, okay? Depending on where the property is, based on the property where it's located, that will determine, you know, uh, what application options you have. The exclusions for new tenancies. For tenancies uh, commencing on or after October 1st of 2021, landlords do not have to apply for rental assistance before sending the three-day notice. Remember, new tenants means all occupants are new beginning October 1st or later. So anything after October 1st of 2021, that means now, November, and up till October 1st, okay? Property will still be subject to the Tenant Protection Act just cause rules. And here's a quick little illustration and how that would work. You know, unit 300, unit 301, unit 302. And here, if it falls on those parameters, your tenant um, has made every essential to apply for financial hardship, you as the landlord, including your, your, your clients, then, um, then the uh, landlord can start the initial uh, three days to pay or quit and start the eviction process. Remember to check local rules. Some uh, uh, local uh, have extended protections in place. That's again, as I stress early uh, through the uh, presentation, that the city of Los Angeles is very notorious and is really uh, tenant protection. So if the property falls under the city, then these rules do not apply. 
Um, the other uh, local rules is may expand, uh, expand just cause rules, may extend repayment time period. Now here is a, a site, which is the Los Angeles County Consumer Business Affairs about the LA County COVID-19 tenant protections resolutions. And it goes into the consumer, small businesses, tenants and landlords. And that's the area that you will have your clients uh, go, the tenants and landlords. And this may also be for you. Maybe you didn't know that you, as a small investor, you know, have uh, rights as well. Now, what transpired last year is nothing of what we have now. There is some leeway now to uh, protecting the landlord too from uh, potentially losing losing the uh, the property under foreclosure because you're not receiving the rental income and it's impacted. Like I mentioned, small mom and pop. Uh, investors that you know had bought with 10, 20 percent down and had maybe five to 10 years, they don't have it all paid up. These are the individual landlords and the homeowners who have invested in properties who've been really impacted by this. So small claims of recovery as part of the uh, process on November 1st of 2021, small claims actions resumes, okay, court systems resume available for unpaid COVID period rent from March 1st, 2020 till September 20th, 2021, regardless of the amount. General restrictions on the amount is 10,000 individual, 5,000 for corporation, or a number of small claims actions too do not apply. Most use court form SC 500 form and the SC 109 form if the property manager is preparing on behalf of the owner. Most uh, approved rental assistance was sought, email, text, and notes. So anything to uh, back up your case in order for some type of uh, small claims, you want to document, you know, make sure that they made every effort and the initial proactive approach to try to get any type of uh, assistance through the state and also on the uh, local level and county as well. Tenants must be credit uh, with any amount received from such assistance equally paid to landlord. So as, uh, as it states, if you got any type of in, uh, rental income, then that must be subtracted from the overall. You cannot say, well, they only gave me partial and I'm still gonna collect the full rent. No, it has to be uh, equally uh, contribute and given as part of the credit from the uh, tenant. These special uh, small claims exemptions expire on October 1st of 2025. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're on uh, 2021 right now. Next month, it'll be 2022. That means an additional three days, okay? Three days, uh, excuse me, three years, not three days, three years. And this special small claims exemption uh, will expire in the year 2025. And again, all that can change from today and tomorrow. Additional resources, okay? Take a photo of this, uh, make a copy of this, write it down. The California Rental Assistance website is housingisKey.com. Summary of this new procedure, which is the, the uh, CAR form, uh, Media Center News Eviction uh, Moratorium N. We have the uh, legal Q&A folks on the Rent uh, Moratorium and COVID Housing Recovery Act, and then small uh, claims procedures as well, which is through the uh, California uh, court systems, okay, under the SC form. So let me dive in real quick and see if I can jump into this uh, website. Now, this is again, the side Housing is key, California.gov. Here, uh, anyone that is asking for some type of assistance will go into the rental assistance. Anyone uh, getting additional information on the eviction process will go here. Anyone that is in foreclosure and needs uh, assistance for the homeowner, let's just say it's been a year, right? You haven't been able to collect any uh, rental income because they've used COVID as a pillar not to uh, make the payment. And now you're in a position that you try to negotiate with the uh, bank to give you the extension. And now that time has expired. Now the uh, 
uh, the uh, mortgage company is now seeking compensation for, you know, five, six, a year of not making mortgage payments. <clears throat> the uh, side goes into COVID relief, uh, uh, check your application status. They have it in Spanish for your uh, Spanish pe uh, speaking uh, clients. They also have it, I believe in Chinese and Korean. Um, I think they also have it in, uh, I'm not sure what language this is, but they have numerous of ways uh, to connect with the, our potential clients. Program dashboard, local government tribes, eviction pr uh, protection, eviction protection information for tenants, eviction uh, protection for forms, eviction protection resources, uh, the uh, questions and the answers, then also the landlords, landlord protection information, protection forms. So let's just click on this and see what it provides us. It has it in English, Chinese, Korean, Spanish, Tonglang, and Vietnamese. And it goes into, you know, the rules and regulations of the three-day notice to pay or quit, notice of Code of Civil Proceeding Act 1179, 15 days to pay or quit, notice of uh, Code of Civil Proceedings uh, Section 1179.2, 5 and D as in David, and just a lot of information. Okay, let me go back. Landlord protection information, you know, and it gives you a more concise understanding. And it's perfectly fine to uh, submit this, provide this link to your uh, clients. Maybe uh, the uh, homeowner or the investor is thinking about selling, but uh, they don't know the initial process that they can collect some type of compensation from this uh, uh, state of relief. So it goes into a lot of information here to provide the mortgage uh, forbearance, you know, how that works as well. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions regarding this information? Let's uh, go up here real quick and eviction proceedings, rental assistance. Eviction protection information. So lots of information here. Now, what I'd like to also uh, uh, touch on is let me go real, real uh, quick back to the uh, presentation. Let's see. Is these uh, specific forms? So uh, the acronym is uh, PRQ. So let me go into my zip forms real quick. PRQ. That's mortgage. That's not the form, where's the COVID? Here it is. What is the tenant of COVID uh, Tenant Relief Act? Here's some information on this. COVID related financial distress means any of the following. And again, all this is part of your member dues and your ZIF forms, loss of income caused by COVID, Increased out-of-pocket expense directly in, in, impacted by COVID, child care responsibility, circumstances related to the COVID. Um, you may qualify for rental assistance in addition to extending the eviction protection in the state of California. And part partnerships with the federal and local government has created an emergency rental assistance program to assist. And here it is just below. Additional information that extends to COVID Tenant Relief Act and new state or local rental assistance programs include more information about how to qualify for assistance can be found by visiting again the uh, website. So a lot of good information here uh, to provide. And this is again, more geared towards uh, property uh, managers, but if you, have any, any questions, I highly recommend that 
you uh, have an opportunity to speak with uh, LEGO so they can kind of navigate as well and provide you with additional information, okay? Any questions regarding the presentation or any questions regarding this, uh, you know, end of the uh, moratorium that you may have? I know it's a little confusing. I know it's a little bit of everything on dates to remember. And if you want a copy of this uh, presentation, please make sure to send me a, a uh, send me an email. I'm going to put my email uh, on the chat real quick, everyone. And if you want a copy of this of this presentation, so that way you can use it as a resource and as an avenue to maybe explain it to your to your client. All right, just put in uh, my information if you have any additional questions regarding this. Um, I know, again, going back, there's a lot of contact, a lot of, uh, uh, and even, even officials and attorneys are having a confusion in how this all works. Remember, there's two components and two elements to this. One is that the uh, tenant has the rights, and now the uh, landlords also have the right if they are in a financial hardship where the uh, tenant has to apply for financial uh, assistance. That also goes for any landlords that have uh, been burdened by non-payment from a tenant and their initial process in order for them to see if they can get some type of financial hardship. If they are declined, then ultimately the uh, landlord has the uh, right, depending again in the city and the, uh, and the, and the uh, county, they can start the initial process if it's not COVID related, the initial process of eviction. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions, thoughts, or concerns regarding the presentation or the uh, eviction? <clears throat> All right. Well, then that, uh, that concludes our uh, presentation. It was just a quick, quick uh, presentation of the understanding. Again, if you do want a copy of this uh, presentation, please feel free to reach 